And now, joining the list of immortals who have left an indelible mark on the game of hockey in the United States, please welcome Natalie Darwitz to the United States Hockey Hall of Fame. Steve, you were my favorite ESPN guy before you put all this 10-minute speech on me. But if Mike Madonna was terrible, I'm getting good hands then, because he was my favorite player growing up. Uh, thank you to the committee for evaluating the impact I had on the game to put me here tonight. Uh, so many great people in this room. I'm truly honored to be here standing in front of you. And congratulations to the other inductees. Uh, it's been great getting to know you and your family the last day and a half, uh, and to JJ's family. Um, type of guy he was, being a homesick Minnesota kid when we were out in Colorado Springs training for the 2002 Olympics. Uh, he invited me and a, a fellow Minnesotan uh, over for pizza and to watch the Gopher game. So there's nothing more Minnesotan than that. So thank you to JJ's family. Also, thanks to Dave Fisher and Madison Brown. Uh, takes the Army to put this on, and those guys spearheaded tonight. So thank you for everything in the last uh, three months. Uh, as a little girl growing up in Minnesota, I, drew, I never dreamed of being the fifth female inducted tonight. I was too busy putting on my brother's hockey equipment with my My Little Pony rollerblades and pretending I was on the Minnesota North Stars getting two-on-one feeds from Neil Broughton. I wasn't your everyday little girl, and my mom was on to me. Despite some obvious distraction techniques in the name of tap dancing and shopping excursions, <laughs> she knew where my heart was. And on my fifth birthday, my, bra my blonde French braid strolled into the hockey rink. I grew up playing with the boys, and this part of my journey laid the foundation for the player I became. I had a target on my back being the only girl on the ice and being how tall I am today, 5'3". This just made me tougher and stronger. When checking became legal in Pee Wee's back then, the biggest guy on the other team obviously wanted to put me through the wall. My dad gave me the simple phrase, Natalie, they can't hit you if they can't catch you. And I, that stuck with me every single game I played from there on out. Thank you to the boys back in Egan that I grew up playing with. You never treated me like a girl. You treated me as a hockey player a teammate, but you also looked after me as if I was your own sister. The most amazing part of my story growing up is not one person in my family, my extended family, or close to me ever batted an eye or told me I shouldn't or couldn't play hockey. I made the switch to girls hockey in seventh grade, played high on my high school hockey team. I know we got a lot of East Coasters in here, but you can't argue with uh, Minnesota State High School hockey. It's the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm uh, blessed to have my hockey coach here tonight, Merlin Ravendall. And, uh, coach R was also my elementary gym teacher, and I never ran the mile harder for anybody else but him. That's how much I looked up for him. Um, coach R made me grow as a player and as a person. As much as we wanted to win every night, he taught me that my character and the lessons we would learn from playing the game were far more important. It's now fun coaching alongside you, Coach. Thanks for everything. To Jack Blatherwick, he's probably at home right now watching hockey. Uh, if you know Jack, he's an absolute hockey genius. He's the one who propelled my Olympic dream. He got me in the weight room. He got me doing his plyo workouts, his overspeed. Um, and he's the most genuine and big-hearted big guys around in breeze hockey. Before the 2010 Olympics, we got together with him again and trained with a few NHL guys. He refused to ever take any payment or any gifts of appreciation from us. He was doing it all because he loved the game and wanted to make us better. I was walking out with him one day to his, uh, his minivan that had all the sandbag plyos in it. I said, Jack, why do you do this every day for free? And he says, I kick your guys's, excuse me, kids, I kick your guys's ass every day in the gym. 
and you do it with a smile on your face, and then you tell me thank you afterwards. That is, your, that is, my, that is my money. <laughs> to my Gopher teammates and coaches, thank you, Laura Halderson, who is on the video, and Brad Frost, Joel Johnson, Charlie Burgraff, and the teammates throughout my three years at the U. Some of my fondest memories and cherished teammates are from the U of Minnesota, coach. The WCHA titles, two national championships, but the great people in the locker room is what makes my memories stick out. I was lucky enough to have played with two of the best ever in the college game, Kirsty Wendell and Kelly Stevens. On the ice, their play speaks for themselves. Just check their stats and All-American status. In fact, I firmly believe Kirsty should be entering the Hall of Fame with me. She's the best player I've ever played with, hands down. Don't be fooled by the points up there. They were mostly assists that I fed to Chrissy in the D zone, and she would weave in and out of players and then undress the goalie, even though they knew the backhand move was coming. More importantly, Chrissy and Kelly were great people off the ice, and they're the meaning of a true teammate. To USA Hockey, thank you. The 10 years I spent being fortunate enough to wear the USA sweater and represent my country was unbelievable. Thank you to the coaches of these teams. There are several out there, but specifically Ben Smith. I didn't skate like sunshine in your laps, by the way. Um, ben Smith, Mark Johnson, Jackie Bardo, Tom Osiki, and Julie Sazen, to name a few. Playing with USA Hockey opened up the doors of many opportunities I would never experience otherwise. The countries I was able to travel to, and more, important, more importantly, the people I was able to meet. To my teammates, 10 years, you come across a lot of teammates, and that's what I remember. Coming into the U.S. program at just 15 years old, not one player treated me like I was 15. The leaders of that team, Cameron Granado and Karen Bai, who you saw on that video, made me feel more than welcomed. I was fortunate enough to start my journey again with Chrissy Wendell, who I consider a great friend. Again, it's the opportunities that opened up the doors for me from USA Hockey. And more importantly, it was the people who I spent that time with. I learned so much from my teammates and the experiences we went through together, both the highs and the lows molded me to the person I am today. There's no way I would be here without any one of my teammates throughout my 10 years. So teammates, thank you. All right, to my family, Uncle Steve. Everybody has that uncle out there. <laughs> Mine's here today. Uh, growing up, you took me to the outdoor rink, Stevie. You taught me how to drive well before 16. You're always at the games with a fist pump and a, at a girl natty. Uh, so thank you for all the love and support. Grandpa Herm, thanks for showing me what quiet confidence looks like. For building me that hockey net that was, that was through thousands of pucks in our driveway. Thanks for making the trek to all three Olympics when you've never traveled outside Minnesota and, and being here tonight. Thanks for all the love and support. I was lucky to be the youngest of two siblings in my family. My brother Ryan, thankfully, let me be a shadow growing up. I tried to go everywhere and anywhere Ryan went, especially if it involved sports. That often meant I had to keep up with him and his buddies on the outdoor rinks, roller hockey rinks, baseball, you name it. My brother wasn't gonna give me a free pass. He'd watch out and protect me, of course, but I had to hold my own. My sister Nikki was my go-to off the ice. Growing up, every, every game I had, she would braid my hair into a French braid. Um, when I was deemed inappropriate to leave the house without sweatpants on, I was able to raid your closet. Thank you. She basically guided my social aspect of my life. I made the US team, like the video says, when I was 15 years old. I was sitting in the locker room next to Cameron Granado around players that were 10 years older than me. I packed my bags when I was 16 years old and left home for good old Lake Placid to train for the 2002 Olympics. People ask me, how did I do it at such a young age? Reflecting, it's quite easy. My brother and sister show me the ropes all along. Thank you guys. Mom and dad, obviously the time sacrifices money early mornings growing up, traveling to every game while at the U and every major event when I was on the US team. You had no idea how much that meant to me to look up and see you guys in the stands. Mom, thank you for letting me be me and guiding me to carve my own path on my journey. I'm sure you had different dreams as your youngest daughter for me. Instead, you let me create my own. You always made sure I was having fun first and happy and it was never about my performance. Dad, growing up, I wanted to go everywhere with you. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to be a rink rat. As I made the switch to high school hockey, you became my coach. And it was 
It was a fun time to get to go to the rink with you every day, day and share the bond and passion that we had together for hockey. You taught me how to work hard for what I wanted and do the things the right way. You taught me to let my actions speak for themselves. Thanks for all the countless knobs you made on my stick, on the top of my stick for me. They're like goalie knobs. For whatever reason, he, he made them for me and I couldn't, re, couldn't uh, repeat them. And Webby tried to make them once for me. Uh, Bob Webster, my favorite equipment manager, tried to make them for me and he couldn't do it either. So thanks, Dad, for all the knobs you put on the top of my stick. Thanks for also twisting my arm and getting me into coaching where I now coach at a D3 school. It was an honor to coach beside you the last six years and to continue to share that bond together. Chris, thanks for the many sacrifices you made. Chris is my husband. When we started, <laughs> uh, we started dating in, two, in, in 06 and I would continue to play through 2010 Olympics. There's not a lot of men out here that can play second fiddle and allow me to continue my dream. So thank you for sacrificing so much for me. And thanks for uh, everyday journey we have with the circus we have at home with the two boys. Every day is, every day is amazing. Boys, Zachary and Joseph, you two are my everything. I know you have no idea where you are right now and why mom and dad put you in uncomfortable clothing, <laughs> but adorable clothing. But that's okay, because the thing I am most proud of in my life is being your mom. I'm gonna do my best to raise you and support you and your dreams and constantly remind you that you and only you make your own rules for your journey. Be authentically you boys, no matter what. I love you. These are just the thank yous of some of the people in attendance tonight. There are so many, many more thank yous I need to pass out to the people along the way that made an impact directly on my life, who supported me or who were kind on my journey along the way. I thank you. Although I may be getting an unindividual award tonight, it took an army of people to help get me here. Thank you. I'm so grateful and honored.